the water panel line. Uh, Sagam says asked me to digitalize these two old master tapes, or actually it says metal tape there on the side. Uh, these tapes are the originals of what Sagami Sensei uh, created in the 90s. Uh, one is, this one is on uh, Kata and applications, and the other one is uh, Kubite fighting techniques. Um, I managed to get it digitalized in a company in Amsterdam and Holland, uh, but unfortunately not everything uh, could fit on the DVD. So uh, we had some clips that were uh, left out of the DVD. DVD uh, by the way, I put it on the web shop at waterkaionline.com. Uh, if you're interested, have a look. Um, but uh, I uh, contacted uh, Peter Mason and Sagamis to ask permission to uh, upload the files to my YouTube channel, the ones obviously uh, which couldn't fit onto the DVD. So this is one of the clips that was left out of the actual uh, DVD that we made recently. Uh, the footage that you're about to watch is performed by Sagami Sensei and it includes the basic stances, punches and kicks uh, which are necessary uh, to be able to perform if you want to apply them in Kumite. The Wadaru fighting stance is based on Seishan Dachi, a stance with the front foot toes turned slightly inwards, both knees bent and the weight distributed to the center. At all times the stance should be practiced in a relaxed manner, never rigid. The front fist is placed just below shoulder height and angled towards your opponent's face. There should be a gap of about one fist between your elbow and body. The back fist is placed just below the elbow of your front fist. A variation is to have your front hand open, or both hands open. This is usually suitable for the higher graded student. However, it is recommended that the beginner keep both fists clenched. Due to modern day competition fighting, with the rules forbidding techniques to the shins and groin, the fighting stance has tended to become longer and wider with the correct wider roost stance being neglected. Sakagami Sensei believes it is essential to practice the correct form. The front kick technique can be performed with or without changing your guard. The important point to remember is to always be aware of your opponent's lead hand and try not to leave yourself open to any counter-attack. It is advised to try and make an angle on attacking with a roundhouse kick. It is essential to move your own body, either outside or to the inside of your opponent's centre line in order to create the correct angle for an effective side kick. For practical use of the front fist punch, Rotation of the fist is not always necessary.
the reverse punch, as with all other hand techniques, it's important that you punch with your body weight and using the correct hip twisting movement. When performing the one-step punch technique, it's advised to move to the outside of your opponent, allowing you a better angle to carry on with the next technique. Try to use your arm and fist in a whipping motion with the back fist technique. Never tense your arm, as this will diminish the effectiveness of the technique. And thank you for watching this old footage of Sagama Sensei, Peter May Sensei and Mr. Clive Wright. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're interested to get this new DVD, which is digitalized from these old master tapes, have a look at waterkaionline.com.